the symbols of our area, water, military, history, and getting stuck in traffic on a bridge tunnel. If you could, why wouldn't you take an air taxi over the water instead? I'll tell you why. Crashing, obviously. But let me introduce you to the local researchers working right now to make sure that doesn't happen. Lake City Tower, Spirit Wings 219. Spirit 219, Atlantic City Tower, runway 31, clear to land. The voices of real air traffic controllers with their real jargon breathing life into a simulation. So the controllers will talk over our simulated radio with our pilots flying our simulators. It looks like a high-tech gaming setup someone might have at home, but these are NASA engineers, and this is a NASA facility at Langley Research Center in Hampton. Our air traffic operations lab here at NASA Langley, and this is where we do research into new technologies, new procedures uh, for air traffic management. The word is uh, efficiency. We're Neil O'Connor is an assistant branch head here. He says so during the holidays, to... bringing efficiency to air travel while keeping everybody safe gets more difficult. Restrictions on, on the capacity of the airspace system. It's limited by how close you can build it, put an airplane together. It's limited by how busy an airport operation can handle the traffic. Making sure that uh, delays are reduced, uh, that the, uh, the system operates efficiently and safe, uh, that's the kind of research that we do in this lab. And now that research is expanding to accommodate the introduction of new technology, tech that's literally already taking off. My understanding is there's several hundred companies that are working actively to build air taxis around the world. Small aircraft, with or without a pilot, that can take people short distances within urban areas. Think from the south side to the peninsula, for example. The addition of a few of these may not have much of an impact, but these guys say if it goes mainstream, our air traffic control system isn't built for it. And that's where the simulation comes in. NASA engineers fly virtual air taxis here in Hampton, but this simulated airspace, they tell me, is connected to the Federal Aviation Administration in New Jersey and its air traffic control hardware. We're actually connecting prototype systems early on to the systems that are operating in the NASA, in the national airspace system today, and that kind of impact leads to cost, lower cost for development of technologies, uh, earlier identification of problems where things may or may not work. It's bad weather, bad winds, things like that, and you can see what kind of effect they're going to have. Testing all those scenarios in different virtual settings, it takes a lot of time, years even. They don't have it. Earlier this month, an electric air taxi test flew in New York City for the first time with commercial passenger service planned for 2025. That's just over a year away. Mind you, this is also a packed airspace already with three major airports. Well, there's a simulation for that in this lab. Yeah. Okay. And they let me take it for a spin. Uh, and then it's gonna come up off the ground. There you go. Flying through Manhattan with a landing point right on top of a skyscraper, that requires focus. We're just going to add a little bit of forward pressure. Okay. It down, and that's it. Okay. Push forward. Boop. Down. All right. But that's just one test flight with somebody who has no interest of becoming a pilot, certainly not flying real humans around. O'Connor tells me that's the next step for his team working with the FAA. Real world pilots and they'll come in and they'll fly the scenarios and then we'll get some feedback. Any idea when that might be? Uh, in the air taxi environment, it's probably a couple years away still. Beyond that, it's simulating the addition of thousands of air taxis nationwide. The industry would like to have uh, these operations happening in the next couple years. Within the next 10 years, we could get to that level where the scalability is such that these are widely available modes of transportation. So for now, we'll just have to settle with sitting in traffic. But the guys working behind the scenes say the third dimension of short distance travel will be here before we know it. It's up to us to make the space. In Hampton, Anthony Sabella, News 3.